watch movies because they throw up words of wisdom when you're least expecting it. I was watching a teen rom-com, Duff, where Bianca says, it doesn't matter what labels others give you, what matters is how you define yourself. Wow. And I just knew I had to talk to you about this, self-worth and how it can affect us. Hi, this is Sheila and you're watching Lumia 24. Light on. Duff is an acronym for Designated Ugly Fat Friend. This is the one person in a group of hot sexy girls or guys who is seen as less attractive but more approachable and is used to reach out to the sexy one. Now, as you watch the movie, you realize that it's not about being the designated ugly fat friend. Instead, it's about comparing yourself to other people around you, especially in your own friend group. Everyone is always going to feel like someone has prettier eyes, better hair, or is better looking, or more successful, more popular than them. But if you compare yourself to others and see yourself as uglier or fatter or anything less than them, you're making yourself a duff. Do you remember how you were when you were a baby? Did you say things like, oh my god, my cheeks are so plump, or look at my tummy? Babies are born knowing their self-worth. But then, as they start growing up, the comments, expectations and attitudes of other people, they start chipping away at their natural sense of self-worth. Self-worth is what strengthens the belief that we can do our best, contribute to the world and lead a fulfilling life. And that's why building it up again is important. How you see yourself and how you talk about yourself becomes the reality for you. And if you're always putting yourself down, belittling your worth and making light of your talents and filled with self-doubt, then you will come across as what I like to call the wallpaper personality. I want you to understand this. This isn't humility. It's self-denial and an attempt to lessen your presence. On the other hand, if you're exaggerating your qualities, talents and skills, you come across as an egotistical and arrogant person. This is not self-worth either, but about intense insecurity. There is a middle pathway and it is the one which you recognize and celebrate the fact that you're a valuable person equal to everyone else and that your talents and thoughts are unique and worthy. Getting to this belief can be difficult if you've spent years underestimating your worth. But like Louise Hay says, it's just a thought and a thought can be changed. Healthy self-love is about being your own best friend. Self-love is not preening oneself all day, constantly beating your chest and announcing, I'm great, I'm great. Self-love is about treating yourself with the same care, tolerance, generosity and compassion as you would treat your best friend. Most of us speak to ourselves in a way that we would never, ever, ever speak to another human being. We are a harshest critic. Self-worth also requires that you learn to listen to and rely on your feelings. When we live up to an image of what you think others want you to be, you lose your own self-worth. Most of us live this way, making choices like what to study, what career to choose, where to live, or how many children to have, and even what to eat, what to wear, and how to style your hair, all based on other people's expectations. Never standing up, never speaking out, never asking for what we want. And it's a real shame to live your life for someone else. Initially, when we let others take their decisions for us, it seems like an easy route. You don't have to make any hard choices. There's no conflict. Everyone seems happy. Well, except you. But you have trained yourself to think that you're not important, right? Ultimately, though, this turns to be a hard route because you will always find yourself boxed in by what other people decide for you. And then suddenly, if the people who make decisions for you disappear from your life, you're left alone and indecisive. And that is a terrible place to end up in. Trust what you feel. Listen to your inner voice. And you will notice when you don't feel too great with the demands on you, you will want to respond with what works better for you or for all of you, rather than what works better for everyone else except you. When you stop having to please everyone else, you can start working on your own happiness and self-worth. What a great idea. 
It's important to express your feelings instead of bottling them up. Of course, respect the feelings of others, but you don't owe them. Some people won't like it. Some people won't like it that you're doing your own thing and that's fine. If we all did the same thing, the world wouldn't get anywhere. Okay, time for some action. I have worked with a lot of clients and I know that low self-esteem is a serious and a common problem. In a society that values what you do rather than who you are, often you feel undervalued. When someone asks you, so what do you do? How many times have you answered, oh, I'm just a... You are not just anything. You are a unique, valuable and wonderful human being who matters. And on that note, here's a tool that you can use as a ready reckoner whenever you feel low on self-esteem and confidence. This is one of the most used weapons in my toolbox. This one's called the reverse bucket list. We all know what a bucket list is, right? It's a list of aspirational goals, things you want to do before you go belly up. Now, a reverse bucket list is a list of all the things that you have done, big and small. So take out your journal and cast your mind back in time and write down everything that you've achieved. We are looking for even small achievements like graduated college on first try. Quite a few don't, you know. Learn to walk and talk at eight months. My kids did that. I'm kind to strangers. I smile easily and lot. Many don't. You're a sunshine. Saw Phantom of Opera twice on Broadway, won the karaoke competition, made the perfect cup of coffee. You get the drift. And as you write, you will realize that you have achieved a lot. You just forgot. As an exercise, I make my clients keep a reverse bucket list for at least a week. It makes you really search and find all that big and small long forgotten wins. That's my mantra. Celebrate all wins. <laughs> Remember, what makes you so special is not being like anyone else. It may sound cheesy, but it's a good mantra to live by. And that was the lesson in the movie Duff. You do you and quit worrying about the rest of the world. And if anyone ever calls you Duff, do exactly what Bianca does. Toss a drink in his or her face. No, don't. Just kidding. Shrug and move on. You really don't need to prove anything to anyone. Post your reverse bucket list in the comment section below for some public appreciation or share this video on social media and write down your reverse bucket list there. Who knows, you may just inspire a few others. And yes, please share this video with your family and friends. People with a higher self-worth and higher confidence create a better world. So spread the light folks, you make a difference.